His reviews will get you further than the film will ever go. If you give him just a moment of your time, he'll let you know. Which movies rock, which movies stink, which movies shouldn't have been released? Say hello to Confused Matthew. It always seemed to me that Star Wars was a movie about faith versus secularism. You have the powers that be who have tracked down and destroyed the last remaining spiritual beings and elements of the universe and replaced them with cold, impersonal machines and weapons. Through much of the film, we hear the officers of the Empire state that they no longer need the Jedi's sorcerer's ways. They have power, and that power has come not from spirituality, but from things. Those who have things are at the top of their game in this film, and those who have faith are an endangered species. The parallels between the Force and spirituality can be found all over the film. Our characters are able to sense the force of living things, influence the minds of others, and even sense attacks when blinded. What separates this from generic superpowers is that none of the characters are actually controlling or manipulating the spiritual force. Obi-Wan instructs Luke that the Force will partially control your actions, but will also obey your commands. This suggests a kind of symbiosis between a Jedi and the Force. The Force itself is said to guide them in these activities, and the more devout and in tune you are with the Force, the more it will work with you. I'll never forget hearing Han Solo say to Luke, I've seen a lot of crazy things, but I've never seen anything to make me believe that there is one all-powerful Force controlling everything. When I was a kid, it almost depressed me to hear him say this, because I always believed that if Han had just opened his mind and had a little more faith, he could have become a great Jedi himself. Our main character is Luke Skywalker, a simple man who realizes that he has descended from something far greater than farming, and that he is far more important than he ever knew. It's an aspect of the film that others would go on to borrow from heavily. Alongside him is Obi-Wan Kenobi, one of the last remaining Jedi in existence. Most of what Obi-Wan does to help Luke is non-violent. He uses mind tricks and sneak tactics, but only resorts to force when he really needs to. And even then, it isn't a welcome action for him. Obi-Wan does very little with regard to combat, but he doesn't need to. His character is so sharply written that it's what we don't see that makes him seem formidable. He makes you wonder what kind of a force to be reckoned with he was when he was in his prime. Then we have Darth Vader, who would go on in the series to become probably the most well-rounded character in the entire series. Even from the very first film, you got the sense that there was more going on with this guy than just being evil. Vader seems to be a tragic character, a man who was a Jedi but had his mind corrupted by the dark side. The remaining characters in the film serve their purpose perfectly. R2-D2 and C-3PO mainly provide exposition and comic relief, but it's a pleasure to have them on screen. Leia is a great female lead, fulfilling her role as the traditional damsel in distress without becoming helpless or submissive. This lady can hold her own. I think the characters are what make this movie so universal, because they have something for everyone. If you think Luke is too much of a wimp for your taste, you can always root for Han. And even if none of the protagonists are to your liking, there is plenty of interest in Vader and his tragic past. George Lucas crafted a traditional story of good versus evil in Star Wars, but like all good writers, he didn't just give us another good versus evil story. He takes tradition and enhances it. It's all the same story we've seen many times, but told in a different and more engaging way. Star Wars is a great adventure and a great fantasy, appealing to the child in all of us. There have been many revisions to the film over the years, but only superficially so. I'm using caps from the special edition Star Wars because it was the only one I could get to load right on my computer. The only version of the Star Wars trilogy that I actually own are the original, non-tampered with versions. But honestly, it doesn't really matter what version of the films you watch, because it's still the same great story no matter how different it looks. Special effects come and go, but Star Wars remains timeless. The end.